What you doing readers? I'm the AC. I'm going to talk about the first two books in the Nocturnal series, Nocturnal Blood and Nocturnal Farm by Valerie Miss. And first, before I even talk about the books, let's look at these covers because I think they look awesome, especially this first one. I didn't realize that to me it had a like little hidden image among all this red. And it's cool that stuff isn't obvious that you kind of just pick up on it without expecting it. And the cover for the book applies to the rest of the book too. There's stuff that is hidden that you just don't know about until it's actually exposed to you and then it all makes sense. All these little clues and hints that appear throughout the books. But before I get to anything spoiling, let me just give you a brief review and thoughts on what I thought of the two books. So first one, Nocturnal Blood. What it is about is this girl named Leia. She has a friend she hasn't seen in a while come back to town named Sophie and it turns out she's a vampire but Sophie gets in a little trouble. She has to end up killing another vampire but this causes them to have to go on the run and Sophie brings Leia along because she says it'll protect her and her family and what the book to sum it down into one little description turns into is a dark vampire road trip. Definitely not a fun one though. Throughout it we see this quick seemingly quick introduction to this new vampire world Leia knew nothing about. Runefields, Sangways, I think that's how you say them, <laughs> and Ghouls. And then they meet other vampires, they meet vampire hunters. You get a little bit of everything so far. And it gets, it's a dark, not fun like I said, but oh man, it's intense. And it always stays exciting. The second one is Nocturnal Farm. This one takes place six months after the first book. And Leia's brother Nathan is going on a trip to Amsterdam. And after not, not checking in for a couple days, the family gets worried. So Leia decides to take a trip to Amsterdam to go find them. And if the first one was just this quick introduction road trip, this one dives right into an Amsterdam filled with vampires and all these other aspects of this vampire world. That's she is trying to have to brave through. The other big thing about Leia that goes through in both of these books is she has OCD. She has these quirks. If someone compliments her, she claps seven times. Stuff like that. One, I like that there's finally a book or anything that uses OCD in not a cute way. <laughs> it's like a serious disorder and it really affects her. And that, especially in the first book. In the second book though, after a whole book of dealing with vampires in this new world, it's not as big of a problem as is the trauma from dealing with what happened in the first book. And I like to see where that develops and you can see and understand why this change is. And it's really nice to show, maybe not necessarily character growth or development, but like there is a reasonable change for this. Now. The other thing I'm going to add to this is, I, I've always been fascinated with vampires, but I've also mainly been disappointed in other things I've read up or watched about vampires. There's nothing really that connects me and really gets me even more fascinated with them. This book finally does. This is the vampire book that I've been looking for. Of course, Twilight blew up and became popular. This is what should have been popular. This one is actually what you think a vampire should be. This is what you would expect when you think of Dracula or Nosferatu. Like this dark and dangerous, not this cute and lovey blah blah blah. And yeah, there's still some humanizing in vampires. Humans are going humanized, even though you can say a lot of humans could end up being the least humane, but yeah, I'm glad to finally see a gripping vampire story that actually reminds me why I was loved vampires when I was younger and glad something is sparking that interest again after the lack of actually good stuff. But let's get some spoilery stuff because like I mentioned at the beginning, there is stuff that's hidden throughout and that's big reveal that I didn't see coming. Starting back with Nocturnal Blood. so. Throughout this, they meet all these different kinds of things, people that are trying to kill them. And this entire time, for some reason, Leia is really trustful of people. And then she finally meets another vampire named Kenji, um, who kind of helped take care of Sophie when she was becoming a new vampire. And 
Kenji's cool. Japanese uh, past Yakuza. You know, they call it Japanese Mafia. I don't know why they don't ever say Yakuza. Um, and she instantly trusts him too. After a whole book, <laughs> she still trusts him. And it's nice. I guess. That she doesn't lose his faith in people, even though she should. And then eventually, we go to another vampire, the one who was actually supposed to take care of Sophie, who was her guardian named Grigori. I keep wanting to say Gregory, but Grigori, uh, some ancient Italian vampire. And he seems cold and what a vampire you would actually think of if they were like modern and still say sophisticated, not like bloodthirsty, but keeps himself in check. Whereas Kenji is just this nice, like, friendly dude who seems peaceful and you learn eventually he's Buddhist. And of course, right away, Leia doesn't like him. But after all of this, there's a big reveal that I, I didn't see it coming really, but it makes so much sense. Eventually, Sophie reveals her and Leia are sisters. They have the same dad. Uh, their dad doesn't know about Sophie being his daughter because of all this past and not wanting to wreck a family. And there's clues to this all throughout the book. There's a whole lot of stuff like, oh, Sophie doesn't want to drink Leia's blood. And it's like, oh, because they're friends or because maybe if she starts, she won't stop. And she makes comments about her blood parliament takes. It's because they kind of have the same blood. I guess it's kind of... I won't say ancestral cannibalism, but kind of, I guess, if you're drinking your sister's blood. I don't know. That was a big reveal in the first book, and it, I don't know how I didn't see it coming. They did, uh, Valami does such a good job at just peppering in these little details, what I guess people would call foreshadowing, without anything being obvious. I see stuff like that where they do it, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is what's going to happen. It didn't happen. It caught me a surprise, so thank you for that surprise. The other thing that goes on, so if you don't know how it ends, so <laughs> Sophie dies. Um, she gets burst in the sunlight, and then Grigori and uh, Kenji come to save while the vampires that killed Sophie are about to kill Leia, and then they kill those vampires. And it, it confused me a little bit because they go on it's like killing a vampire, blah, 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 it's bad, we don't kill our own kind. But then I guess the reasoning behind it is since Grigori's an elder, uh, he can kind of do this kind of stuff anyways. But like this whole started because Sophie killed a vampire and then those vampires killed her and then Grigori and Kenji killed them. I was like, hmm, and there didn't seem to be any repercussions from that. So, I don't know. But from there... Um, it turns out Sophie's last wish to Grigori was to uh, be Leia's guardian. And then Kenji kind of piggybacks on that too because he's a nice vampire guy. And that's kind of where the book ends. Leia goes back to her home, says there was a car accident where they went on this random road trip that she snuck out of. Sophie died in a car crash. It kind of goes off from there. Then six months later is when the next book comes. Now this one. It had some nice little hint going on in it too. Another moment that caught me up by surprise. But, um, so Leia lost Sophie. She's been dealing with this for half a year. She's been counseling. Um, she's trying to get closer to her brother after, I guess a little bit closer to her brother, after losing Sophie, realizing she was her sister. She kind of doesn't have the same closeness with her dad now because of it. There's a lot of internal conflict going on with her. A lot of trauma, like I said. And maybe it's the counseling or new medication but like I said, her OCD, quirks, and all those things don't play as big of an obstacle in this book as much as the trauma does. So she goes with Grigori and Kenji to Amsterdam to look for her brother. And one, the name of the title should have been a giveaway. Um, at the end of the first book, Sophie brings up something about a farm and it clicks. I was finishing the first book when the second book came out, so I saw saw the name of the next book right around the time I saw Sophie mention the farm. I was like, ah, okay. But they do this. They're looking through. Eventually, Leia meets some vampire hunter. And they find the farm. You know, stuff uh, goes through. At first, I was like, man, they're kind of taking the time. It takes about a few days to find 
this farm, find her brother. But what catches me by surprise in this book, and it's not the fact that one of the hunters turns out to be on the enemy side. I kind of saw that coming. It, his name's Adam. Uh, and he was kind of creepy as soon as Leia meets him anyway. So I was like, mm, something's not wrong with you. And what catches me surprised with him, though, is that he's a vampire. And I was like, okay, that can be something. Well, but it, he's an experimental vampire. He doesn't get hurt with his son. And I guess that's why it caught me off guard. But it's also kind of a weird thing that all of a sudden there's experimental testing to make vampires. I was like, okay, that that's actually something new, I guess. It's just, that one caught me by surprise and off guard to where I was like, okay, let me take a second to wrap my head around this. Okay, and I'm good. So, find his brother, everything turns out. That was kind of the big reveal on that. There's not really any tragic in this. I thought maybe one of them would die. And I guess someone almost does. Um, so, Leia gets hurt. And she's about to die after she saves her brother. Blah, blah, blah. And this is the one thing in the entire series so far that... I wasn't thrilled about. Eventually, <sighs> Grigori to save her turns her in vampire. And I was like, ah. This always seems to happen in stories. It's one of the things I don't like is that it seems like the main protagonist always ends up turning into a vampire. It's like, ah, oh, man. I kind of like seeing Leia as a regular person with real problems and issues that she's overcoming. I guess now I look forward to see how those kind of issues either fade or still mess with her as a vampire. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. But that's kind of where the book comes off from there. It was really cool seeing what Amsterdam be like full of vampires. And I guess it makes sense. There's a lot of red light districts and underground stuff that vampires could easily go through. But overall, it was a cool experience. And now I guess I just have to wait for the third book, Nocturnal Salvation. See where it goes from there. Now her brother knows what vampires are. And see what part he plays. I could see him taking a vampire hunter kind of route. That's what they feared with Leia and she seemed to kind of go back and forth on be a segue or she was definitely not going to do that but being part of this vampire world be a hunter world. I don't know. I'm really looking for forward to what salvation is going to hold because oh man it is very much a ride throughout the both these two books and I'm so glad I picked them up and got my interest back into vampires. It's so great, so great. I can't tell you how excited I actually am. But, have you read these books? I definitely suggest you should. Nocturnal Blood, Nocturnal Farm, A Veil Me Miss. They're great. If, whether you are a huge fan of vampires or not, the way it's written and all the things you can read and discover in them is fascinating. You should check them out. But, if you have read them, let me know what you think and what your favorite parts of the books are. If you like what I have to say, well, go ahead and like this video. If you want to see me talk more about other things I read and whatnot, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You can see when I do all that. But until next time, I'm DAC. Thank you for watching and bye.